Hello and welcome to our live webinar today. Um, today we're so excited to bring you a webinar uh, with our guest presenter Stephen Payne, who is also known as at Standouted if you're on uh, Twitter. Um, we're the Computer Science Education Research Group at the University of Adelaide and this uh, training has been made available with funding from the Department of Education, Skills and Employment. Um, today, uh, we're very excited about this topic. We're looking at Minecraft and augmented reality. Uh, it's one of the themes of our CESA National Lending Library. And uh, Minecraft education really enables you to support teaching and learning through a game-based interface. And there are many interesting op opportunities using mixed reality and augmented reality that Stephen's going to walk us through today. So he's going to show you how easy it is to bring these two worlds together um, using these different tools and um, give us lots of different ideas about how to implement that in the classroom. But first, just a little bit about Stephen in case you haven't met him yet. Uh, Stephen is a brilliant speaker and presenter on all things EdTech. He's a former maths teacher and also um, we were very fortunate to have Stephen as one of our uh, CESA project officers for our National Digital Technologies Project. Um, Stephen now mainly works with the Microsoft education team and he supports staff and schools across Australia to make the most out of the technologies uh, such as Minecraft for learning and teaching among many other tools. Um, so I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us today, Stephen, and I'll hand over to you. Thanks very much, Rebecca. I'm going to share my screen in. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be recording this. So if you um, if you turn your camera or mic on, you will be added to the, the recording that will be available from the CESA team later on. Um, so I'd first of all just like to... Um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm working on today, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation. And I'd like to pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. And I recognise their relationship to the land around us and their contribution to the culture and education of our people. Obviously, we've got people joining right across the, uh, the, the country today. I'm not sure if it's right across the world, but wherever you're joining from, I'd like to uh, acknowledge um, your traditional owners and the um, communities that you are joining us from. So thanks very much for joining. If you've got any questions, um, feel free to put those into the chat. Um, you'll see a little speech bubble somewhere on Teams um, and you'll be able to say hello. The chat is not saved. So, um, so it won't be as part of the recording. It's just while we're here live. So if you'd like to say hello and where you're joining from, and if you've got any questions as we go through the session, feel free to put those in the chat. We will have some time at the end. If you've got any particular questions that you'd like to address, we'll stop the recording um, when I've presented everything and, and we can have a little bit of a discussion. So great to see um, people from right across Western Australia and of course, right across Australia. I've been so stuck in Western Australia the last couple of years. That's, uh, that's all I think about, but it's great to be able to uh, join people uh, everywhere. So as Rebecca said, my name's Stephen Payne. Um, I'll share my email address later on in case you want to follow up on anything. And also we'll make these slides available um, and the recording and all the links. So you don't need to take photos of the screens or um, screenshots and things like that. Everyone who's attended will be, um, will be sent all these resources. So we've done the introductions. I'm going to give you a quick overview of Minecraft. We're going to look at the structure block, which is the, really the main part of Minecraft that allows you to um, work with 3D models. So once you've created something in Minecraft, you can extract it using the structure block and you can use it in different tools such as Windows Mixed Reality, Merge Cubes. And I know that the, the, um, the CESA team uh, have class uh, have sets of these that you can um, borrow with lesson plans and really fun activities as well. And then I'm briefly going to mention Adobe Aero, which is a great app for the iPad. And then I'm going to share some further resources where you can find out more about Minecraft and um, 
other stuff as we go um, through. So there'll be lots of uh, lots of questions, uh, lots of resources to share at the end of today's session. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background on um, on Minecraft, and it would be great to know in the the chat what your experience is with Minecraft. Have you used Minecraft uh, for students to explore worlds? Have you um, used it for teaching digital technologies? Um, are you brand new to Minecraft? So if you just want to write something in the, the chat about what you've done with Minecraft or what you'd like to do with Minecraft, that would be great to, to hear. But as you can see here, we've got um, ancient Egypt, we've got um, volcanoes, bees, um, all sorts of scientific um, endeavors you can explore in Minecraft. So I think it's a really great tool. And I think it becomes even more powerful when you can take what's in Minecraft and bring it into your own classroom or your own school oval or students can bring it into their um, their gardens and those sorts of things. So it looks like there are some people who are new to Minecraft here and I expect there's some people who've used Minecraft um, a lot as well. But as you can see here, you can have characters that can that can chat to you. You can um, automate um light systems entire cities so much stuff you can do in minecraft well i say you i can't do half the stuff that i've just mentioned but students can and that's the main thing you don't need to be an expert uh to be able to use minecraft successfully in the classroom but as long as you can see how it links in with the learning outcomes whatever curriculum areas they are uh you can do a lot with minecraft um, the students have the skills Excellent. So we've got a thanks for sharing your um, your thoughts in the in the chat. So Minecraft, um, it's designed for the classroom. There's Minecraft that um, students can play, and I think it's it's currently the biggest selling game in the world. 150 um, million users use it every week. Um, but the education edition is now available, I think, to pretty much all students across Australia. So it's got the the actual game the students know and love, but there's a whole lot of educational features built on top of it. And there's a lot more that students can um, can do with teachers guidance. It works on um, Windows. I'm on a Windows computer now. Earlier today I was on an iPad. It also works on MacBooks and Chromebooks. So all of the things that we use and you just log on with your school Microsoft log on. So I heard a statistic last week that about a quarter of all students in Australia use Minecraft each month. So I know certainly in WA it's it's really popular with um, with schools. Um, it's really popular in digital technologies, but you also see some really creative ways of using it in art or history or um, for social and emotional learning and that sort of thing. So there's a whole load of numbers on the on the board there. Uh, and I'm going to show you where you can get the STEM curriculum, the hour of code activities and how you can actually um, go and get some on demand uh, educator training as well. So right across the world, it's having gr uh, a great impact. So we've got here a, a parent and journalist from Brussels to Dubai. It never gets old. The game has changed our lives. Um, children are not just excited about playing a game, they're excited about learning, says Jeff from the United States. And then Lynn, a uh, teacher in Australia, says that um, the students learn and communicate in a safe, innovative environment and true innovation is happening. And I've definitely seen that in the schools that I've been working with. Um, teachers are coming up with great ideas and students are, are taking it to the next level. So I'm hoping that what I show you today with the way that you can use Minecraft with augmented reality, um, students can go even further. So um, engage students with a game they love and they can develop their social and emotional skills, inspire a passion for computer science and STEM, and we prepare learners for the future. So I think those are all um, all key things that we want in our classroom and uh, Minecraft and how it works in um, with other bits of software, I think really, um, uh, really is a great tool to, to pick up and use. So a whole lot of features designed for education. We're not going to get a chance to go through all of these today, um, but the key thing is it's secure. You can log in. You can only play with other people from your school or your Department of Education, for example. 
um, a whole lot of resources, assessment tools, and there are classroom tools as well. So as a teacher, you can kind of monitor what the students are doing and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do now is just go straight into Minecraft and explain to you um, how you can work with 3D models once you are in Minecraft. So I'm not really going to give you a whole um, I'm not really going to give you a whole overview of what Minecraft is. I'm going to mention a few things, but today we're really focusing on um, on working with structures and taking them out of Minecraft. So the first thing we're going to do is go and look at something called the structure block. And this is something specifically for the education edition to make it easy to work with structures. So this is where um, we see how powerful my computer is. I'm going to load up Minecraft. I had it loaded earlier. Let's see if it's um, if it's uh, if it needs me to log in again. Um, so you log into Minecraft with your um, school email address. You need to download Minecraft um, from the Minecraft website. It's not a web-based tool. So whether you're on a an iPad, you download the app, or you're on a a laptop, you download the um, the Minecraft app. And then you just sign in with your school email address and away you go. So this is me. I've logged into Minecraft and um, before I start playing, I can choose what I look like in the game. So this is really useful if you've got a whole group of students working together. You can choose what you look like. I'm going to put on my uh, coding T-shirt today. C for coding and away I go. So I can go and start playing Minecraft. I can go to view my worlds and these are all the worlds that I've been working on recently. So everything I've been working on gets saved to my device. But then I can also go and explore a whole lot of ready made lesson activities. So there are um, science lessons, computer science lessons, maths, history, social and emotional and loads and loads of different resources that you can pick up and um, explore. So as a uh, this is one actually that just uh, just came out this week or even today actually um uh the minecraft team have gone over to oslo for the nobel uh, peace prize uh, ceremony and they've created a whole world um around um, being an active citizen and peace which is which is really uh, a great um activity there so loads to explore um there are monthly bill challenges. This is normally where I where I start with um, students, particularly if I'm new to Minecraft or the, the students are new to Minecraft. These are all activities that students can do either individually or they can work in small groups. They can generally be um, done in a, about um, an hour or less. So there's well, it's taken a while to load, but there's all sorts of worlds there uh, ranging from science to um, maths to English um, and so on. So you can see there's a, an air challenge in maths, um, pollinating uh, gardens with bees um, and lots more besides. And it, you can see with all age ranges. So here's a nice simple one that I've seen used with year one students, for example, just using colourful blocks to design a, a book cover. So lots and lots to explore there, but I'm going to go in now and show you once you've actually created things, how can you work with those? So I'm going to go to a world that I was in earlier today. I was um, getting ready for harvest time in my farm. So I'll show you this world. And what I'm going to do is take one of the buildings from my world take it outside of Minecraft and show how you can use that um, in a number of different um, bits of software um, on iPads and uh, Windows computers. OK, I do find that Minecraft goes a little slow when you've got a lot of things running, but I think we are we're just about keeping up with it. So here's I'm going into this world and I'm just going to play this world. Um, and it'll launch. So um, a world in Minecraft is really like a just an open sandbox. You can download worlds that are ready made. You can get a world of, um, you can download Melbourne, for example. You can download Adelaide. You can um, Baghdad, worlds that you can download and work in. Or you can create your own world. You can open a, a blank world, whether that's on a desert island or it's in a rainforest. And you can actually create 
places to live or whether they are um, monuments or anything. So um, we'll just wait for this to load. Hopefully it won't be too long. And then I'll show you um, how you can actually uh, deal with the, the structures in there. So just while that's loading, um, I'm just going to um, mention this. We're going to be using something called the structure block. And I've written some uh, code there. This is actually a command line. It looks a little bit um, looks a little bit frightening, maybe for a teacher, but a student are, are used to using commands in Minecraft. So all this is saying here is give at s a structure block, and that means give a structure block to yourself. So give at s at s is yourself, and structure block is the special block that we're going to use. So. Um, if you say that to a student, type that command in, they'll know exactly what it means. And then once you've got the structure block, you can then actually put it on the corner of one of your buildings and you can then export that model and use it in, for example, Merge Cube or um, Windows uh, Mixed Reality Viewer and so on. So um, what I'm going to do is go back to Minecraft and hope that it's loaded. And then um, we will have a look at that live. Maybe we'll see how we go. So there we go. I'm in Minecraft now. And there I am with my, with my structure block. So once I've given myself a structure block using that command, I can then go and place that structure block somewhere in my world. So this is a world which has got... Um, Got some grass. That's actually a big pumpkin that I've uh, that I've uh, got the students to build. And then if I navigate around, um, I can see other things that I've built. Yeah, it's just going kind of really low with the um, too many things running on my computer. Sorry about that. Uh, luckily, I've made some videos for the next the next part of this session, so you don't need to go quite so slow. So. Um, let me just show you what it would do with this uh, pumpkin. If I put the uh, if I put the um, struct on, what I can then do is choose by using the Z coordinates. I can choose what part of my world I want to export, and I can export quite a lot. I can export um, 64 by 66, so quite a large house or area of a farm or whatever it might be. You just put the block down. Um, and it allows you to export that part of the block, part of the world. Sorry, I might, this looks like it, I might not be doing this live right now. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Sorry about that. Um, I'm actually going to clean craft down. Sorry. <laughs> it's just hogging all of my power there we go so i've got a um i've got a structure block here and um what it shows you here i've actually done a, a video of this i'll i'll send out in the follow-up email but i put a block down there and i've said i want to um do 10 blocks in the x direction seven in the y and six in the z um, and the offset you can use if you want to kind of bring in some of the ground underneath or or things like that so you choose what you choose what you want to um, you choose what you want to build, and then what you can do is you just click export, and it saves it to your desktop, um, or on a, an iPad you can send it straight to your um, to your files. So what the uh, when the when the object is exported, um, you can then do a number of things with it, and I can show you that. Now, so one of the things you can do is built into Windows, there's a tool called Paint 3D. Uh, you may have seen that. It's kind of the new version of Paint. Um, and uh, you can export that. Uh, I just saw a question there. Are there any Mac options for software? Um, yeah, good. So yes, so Minecraft works on a Mac. You can export objects, uh, 3D objects on a Mac. And you can bring them into PowerPoint and do some cool things with them, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, you don't have the mixed um, reality viewer, but there are some other things that you can do, which I'll show you now. So when you export a 3D object, you can then um, open it with what's called the Mind Windows Mixed Reality Viewer. 
Um, so here, for example, some students have built a, uh, a farmhouse and um, they're just standing there. They've got it there on the on the desk in front of them. Um, I've seen students design um, new seating areas in their classroom or designing something in the um, for the school oval and those sorts of things. You can vaguely see in the background, that's the Minecraft screen. They've just exported it and they've opened it with their Windows um, viewer. So I'm going to just show you that on my, um, I took a little video this morning and this is my Windows desktop and this is the 3D uh, paint um, file, the nice pretty sort of paint blob. And I've exported a pumpkin, a hut and a research house. So if I just need to click on that on Windows and it opens up in Paint 3D. Um, so there's my pumpkin that I created earlier. And I'll just say a little bit about this. You can uh, paint your objects as well. And because it's a 3D painter, you can do all sorts of really cool textures, um, which I think is fantastic. But what's really nice is this mixed reality viewer. So I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a nice um, rooftop garden in my apartment block. So I just went up to my um, apartment block and decided I was going to put the pumpkin there. So all I'm doing there is just looking through the Windows Mixed Reality Viewer and I can put my object down wherever I want it. Um, what you can also do there is switch to video mode. So if you've got um, students who've maybe built a structure or maybe they've uh, created a, um, a house from a um, a book they've been reading, they can actually walk around it and um, interact with it while someone is videoing it. So it will pick up the the um, the object with the um, with the real background as well. Um, the other one I did, I think I did one here. Yeah, the uh, periodic table. So there's I mentioned earlier that there's some great science stuff. You can actually um, get blocks for all of the different elements in the periodic table. And what I've done here is I've just, um, I hope I've done it right, um, copied them into the, the order of the periodic table. And then I wanted to go and explore that. And maybe um, I'm going to talk about different elements and how they're structured. So I can put that down on the ground. I just tap where I want it and it kind of anchors itself to the ground. So I can then with my laptop, I can walk around it. I can look at it from the back, from the side, from the top. Um, and I can interact with that and other students can. So it's a really great way of taking what you've created in Minecraft to show your understanding or your creativity and bring that into the real world. So you simply get that structure block, export the structure, and then you can bring it into um, the uh, Windows viewer. Um, we had the question about, is there other options for Mac? Yes. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is I'm actually going to close down. Um, I'm going to close down the PowerPoint and show you how I um, show you what I've been doing in my PowerPoint. So I've just imported this um, structure. This is actually a uh, I think this is a boathouse from a Hogwarts world. Looks pretty cool. Someone will be able to confirm and tell me exactly where it sits in the uh, Hogwarts map. Um, but what I've done is in. Um, in PowerPoint, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, you can insert 3D models. So there's a whole lot of 3D models built into um, PowerPoint. So there's dinosaurs and avatars and biology and all sorts of great stuff. Like you can have a beating heart. It's really cool. So there's loads of great stuff, but you can also bring in your own models. So if I go on to this next page here, uh, and again, yes, you can do this just in PowerPoint. I can go 3D models uh, from this device. And if I go to my desktop, well, I've got so many folders there. Um, there's my Hogwarts boathouse. I can insert that. I can rotate it. It gives you 3D model view, so you can actually look at the um, side on view. You can have it totally right. And then you've also got these animations. So you know how you have those animations for text and for word art that students spend hours adding fun to their presentation? You can get some really great effects with, um, with this. So you might want to show off the whole of your model. So put it on a turntable. And then when you present the PowerPoint, let me just put this on my other screen and hit present. So now when I present my PowerPoint, 
I can just click on that object and it actually starts um, rotating. So that's a really nice um, feature. If you've if you've done an intricate model or something like that, you can actually bring that into uh, Minecraft. Um, any object uh, works really well. So I, I think that's a, a fantastic little tool. Um, in fact, I'm just going to do one more. I'm going to do that with a pumpkin just while I'm here. So I think I can just drag and drop. Actually, there's my presentation. I'm just going to I'm just going to duplicate that slide. Duplicate. I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to drag my pumpkin across. And now I'm going to add an animation and it's going to be. Um, uh, jump and turn. There we go. So now I've got a jumping pumpkin. Fantastic. So really easy to do that. And it just adds a bit more life to your um, to your presentations. Excellent. Great. Uh, now I'm going to mention um, merge cubes. And the great thing is you don't really need to do much different to what we've just done with um, uh, to what we've just done with the um, the Windows version. Obviously, merge cubes are a physical object. So um, that's my merge cube. And the way merge cubes work, there's a whole load of great um, resources uh, ready made for you to use with merge cubes. But you can also create your own. And one of the easiest ways is to do that with Minecraft if you're using um, Minecraft. So once you've exported your um, objects from Minecraft, you can't just upload them to the um, merge cube site or the um, app. Unfortunately, you have got to do a bit of converting. Um, they they kind of changed the way things worked last year. It used to work a couple of years ago, but um, it changed last year. So uh, I've just found a really great website. I'll put it into the um, I'll put it into the follow up email. Um, there's a few different ways that you can do it, but I've used this one. It's a free online converter. There's no ads. It just seems to be um, uh, pretty easy to use. And what I do is when you export something from Minecraft, it's a GLB file. Don't ask me what that stands for. You can't bring a GLB file into Merge, but you can bring in some other ones. And I've found from my extensive practice <laughs> that a GLTF works the best. So all I do here is go to this website, drag my pumpkin or my Hogwarts house onto this icon here and click convert once I've chosen GLTF. So once I've done that, I can then um, import that into the um, merge edu site and students can use that just by scanning the QR code or typing in typing in um, the code. I don't know if anyone on the call right now has a merge cube or the app with them, but you might be able to try it live now. So because I've shared, uh, a, I've uploaded some of mine, I can just share the code with you and you're able to look at it live um, via the app, which I think is really fantastic. So, um, so you go to the um, merge edu website. So this is me. I'm logged in with a, a teacher join code. Um, you can sign up for a, a free trial um, and there's also a free version, but I think the, it limits you to five objects. Whereas with the paid version, you get, I think, up to 50 objects at, at one time. Um, with the um, with the kits that um, the, the Caesar team share, um, you get those licenses inclu included. So there's there's plenty to explore, but you can just sign up for a free account. Um, there's a lot of things you can do, like assign um, things to students, and you can explore a whole lot of scientific and geographical and uh, technological um, resources. But all I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've uploaded some of my um, work. I've uploaded my house, my hut, the Hogwarts boathouse, and a roller coaster that some students made for me. So you just um, you just click upload, and you upload your file. Make sure you've already converted it to a GLTF and then away you go. So right now, um, if you were to open up the Object Viewer app on your iPad or your phone, and oh, I pressed the button too quick. Can I go back? 
Yes, I can. Um, so if you were to scan that QR code or type in that object code, that will actually show you the Hogwarts boathouse that I've created. Um, and there's two ways that you can do it. Or three ways, actually. Rebecca's just reminded me. You can download a printable version of the M Merge Cube. Um, and that's really good if you want to hold it in your hand, rotate it, maybe pass it to someone else. But you can also just look at it without the Merge Cube just on a table or um, on the floor or something like that. So um, if I show you again a video I made this morning, um, this is bringing, this is uh, scanning that code or typing in that code that I just shared with you. So I type in MYELJ4 in the Object Viewer app. It finds my object that I've uploaded, the one that I've just brought out of Minecraft. And there I am on my um, table, and I can place that on the table. You'll see at the top of the screen, it says it said world. So you can switch between the world, which just means you can place it anywhere in your world, much like the Windows um, Mixed Reality Viewer. Or you can switch it to... Um, you can switch it to... Um, cube. And it will actually show you the um, activity in the merge cube. I don't know whether, oh yeah, I have got that there. It's at the end of the thing. So I'm just bringing my merge cube into, into focus. So I scan the cube. Oh, wow, it worked for Suzanne. Fantastic. Watching the um, presentation and trying it out as well. So you can actually see that uh, moving around in my hand. Um, so that's a really cool tool. And I think, the fact that students can just hold that in their hand and they can see what they've built or they can see what, what their friends have built. It's a really um, simple but uh, powerful um, addition to, um, to learning in Minecraft. So that's the, um, that's the Merge Cube. Um, I just shared my, my code there. Um, students can share with each other um, and teachers can share with, with students as well. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, so the got that. I think I've just shown you. I've just shown you that one. Um, got too many. Um, oh yeah. So I was just going to show you the um, the Adobe Aero as well. Now this is a. Um, I don't know how long this has been around. I think it just came out last year. This app. Um, and what Adobe Aero is. Why this is really useful if you're using iPads. Um, this is a free app, so you can install um, Adobe Aero for um, for free. And I've really only explored it with Minecraft. I know through looking at the um, website. I'm just going to bring that up briefly. Um, I think I've closed down all my. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the website because this is a, a new app. If anyone's used it, maybe you can uh, write something out. It came out late 2020. Thanks. Um, Suzanne, um, yeah, but if you look at the website, just the amount of um, the amount of things that you can do with this app, I think it's such a, uh, a fantastic tool. I won't play the videos, but I'll just kind of highlight some of the things that you can do. So you can um, you can design, you can um, create a virtual tour, augment a book, take 2D objects, um, 3D objects, bring them together. Um, and I guess there's a, a guy here walking down the, the street um, and got all sorts of 3D objects um, swirling and moving around them. So I just had a quick look at the video later. Um, again, we'll share the link with you, but just looking at, at the kind of creative ways that you can use this, um, really, uh, really simple to do, both drawing in 3D, but also taking those models you've created in other product uh, in other products like Minecraft and and sharing those um, into Adobe. So you can add all sorts of interactivity. You can add pathways, sound, and there's loads to explore. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna feel really embarrassed about what I show you now because I haven't explored this app very much. But I I'm gonna show you just some basic things you can do with um, uh, with Aero on the iPad. So great thing about Aero is you don't need to um, change the file type. You can download a file from um, Minecraft 
and you can share it straight into Adobe Aero. And on an iPad, you can actually export a world from, sorry, export a 3D object directly on the iPad and open it straight away in um, Aero. So I think that's really cool. So bear with me. This is um, this is only, I think, the third or fourth time I used Aero uh, when I recorded this video. So what it first of all does is um, you open up um, Adobe Aero and it finds a flat surface. So you can see this kind of mesh. It's putting all over the all over the floor. Um, and once it finds a surface, you tap to show that that is your surface and that is what you're going to build in. So I've just sort of chosen quite a bit of the, the deck there. I just tap the I just tap the floor and then I can bring in. I'll just go back a little bit there. I can actually bring in any of the um, any of the worlds that I've got either on um, in my files or on my camera roll. So these are just some of my um, Minecraft things that I've got um, downloaded to files. So I brought in my Hogwarts um, building again. And then you'll see down the bottom, you can um, move, rotate, scale. And then there's all sorts of things you could do like duplicate. Um, so you could make a whole, a whole city and things like that. So lots of things to explore. I'm just showing you the basics here. Dead easy to use. I can open that up. Um, and then what I think is really nice about this is because it's anchored to the floor, I can actually make it quite large enough to walk through. So I'm actually putting this on my um, on my deck and I'm going to crouch down and actually go and ex in explore the interior of this build. So imagine I was making a video and I was um, narrating at the same time. I could be in here explaining how I built things and why I've decided to uh, build things. And it actually becomes part of your landscape. If you've got any windows, you can look through the windows, you can walk through the doors. And what you've created in Minecraft becomes part of um, part of your world. So really, um, a really powerful little tool. As I say, I've only uh, used it a few times, but I just think it's a, a really awesome um, experience. If you think about um, you know, transforming your classroom and making a, a historical video or transporting yourself to another country and things like that. Dead easy to use. And I love um, love the fact that it's um, it's uh, it's a, a free app as well. And it works seamlessly with Minecraft. You just download the file and away you go. Um, so, yeah, really, really like that. Give that a go and let me know how you um, how you find that. So Adobe Aero works on. Um, iPad and on mobile phones and there is a Windows version um, that's in in beta so it's not got all of the features and I don't think there's a, a Mac version so you will need a an iPad or a, a mobile phone to use that uh, this was actually done on a an iPad um, another one I made this was my very first one I made um, uh, probably about oh sometime earlier this year this is actually my my home office so i'm actually sitting real close to this now so um a student i know was designing a um was de designing a roller coaster to to highlight um uh, some physics uh, topics so how they were like timing how how quick the uh, the mine carts went down and that sort of thing so i thought i'd bring it into my uh bring it into my <laughs> my home office for my spare room so there you go and you can see there you can kind of look through it and i've like put my <laughs> put my uh desk into a into some kind of roller coaster jail um but really easy to do um as i've shown you there um i think you can see some of the potential but get students um with this app and with what they've done in minecraft and they can really um really demonstrate their learning well but but also learn in new in new ways um so I think I'm just looking at that. Yes. Yeah, so that's those are kind of the things I wanted to show you. Just kind of the what's possible with um, augmented uh, reality in Minecraft. Um, thanks, Rebecca. So it looks like Adobe Aero's on iOS. So I think iPhone and iPad, and it's in beta on Android and Windows Desktop. So I'm just going to mention a, a couple of other resources that you might find useful. Um, and then I'll um, see if there are any questions, and then we'll hand back to Rebecca to uh, finish up and tell you uh, 
what's on offer next from Caesar. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes um, just telling you where you can go and find out more about Minecraft. So um, there's a, oh, I've got too many uh, options there. There's a nine hour, 43 minute course. It might be a bit longer than that. I completed one of the modules uh, called the Minecraft Teacher Academy. So I think altogether it's about a 10 hour course where you can go and learn all about Minecraft in the classroom. So you learn about creating lessons, classroom management, assessment, um, student well-being, all of those sorts of things. Um, we'll share these slides with you and the links later on. But that's a really great course um, that you can work through. Um, I'm just going to see if I can copy that link. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll share those. Actually, I've opened that up. So I'm just going to, oh, there we go. I've actually put them all in a sticky note. So um, I think I'm just going to put the the the, uh, the things in the chat, the ones that I've mentioned so far. And then um, I'm going to copy in the uh, Teacher Academy. Uh, yeah, so a really great, a really great course. Um, that you can do. And I'll just put the link in the chat, but we will send these out as well. Um, so I, I run uh, throughout the year a number of different uh, professional learning for, um, for teachers here in Australia with the Microsoft team. Um, and there's a link there to all of the um, all of the workshops we've got um, this term and next term. So we've got a whole range of workshops between um, between March and um, March and June coming up. And then I'm very excited about this. No one knows what I'm going to show you now is brand new. Um, in that I only wrote this um, email um, this morning. So. Um, the Minecraft team have put together a whole um, lot of new resources for computer science, um, and we are going to be piloting it in Australia. Um, so I'm going to be running some workshops at the end of this term and during the school holidays for people that are interested. Um, we're looking for teachers that have used Minecraft before. Um, so this is really for people who've used Minecraft before and want to teach digital technologies or computer science from years three to eight. So if that's you and you you fancy joining in with something cutting edge, um, just email me and I will send out the invites. Uh, no one else has got those yet. That's brand new. But we're going to do them in the last two weeks of term this, this term and uh, a couple of things during the school holidays that are um, supporting that. So that's... Um, all I wanted to share, just a few resources where you can go and find out more. Um, my time is up. Uh, there's the Minecraft website address. There's Playcraft Learn, which is the Minecraft Twitter handle, and also, I think, Instagram and Facebook, and they share loads of great stories around what's going on in the world. And as Rebecca said at the beginning, you can find me on Twitter at Standout Ed, and I share lots of um, cool Minecraft stuff when I find them. So uh, that's me. Thank you very much for coming. If there are any questions, feel free to come off mute and ask those. Um, I'll stop the recording now so that we're not, um, so that you're not, so the shy people can talk. There we go. Recording.